Hello folks. There's been a lot of questions asked about how I set the belt tension on my V400. Well, let me begin by saying that I am not a belt professional. I am not a belt engineer. This is not scientific, but it works for me and it works for my V400. We're gonna be using this little gauge right here that I did not design, but I did modify, and I'll tell you why in a couple of minutes. As I said, I'm not a belt professional, I'm not a scientist, but I have developed something that works for me. As you can see, I wrote it all down, and I'll put this page in the uh, comment section so you can look at it more closely. So what I did was, I took my super racer, and I know that belt is a 2GT 10 millimeter wide. And I know the length is 1,250 millimeters. Then I went to the V400, that's a 2GT belt as well, 10 millimeters wide. And the length of that belt is 1,460 millimeters. So what I did was I just took the difference in the belt length, which comes up to 15%. Now, going back to the Super Racer, again, both of these printers are running perfectly, so I know this works. This Super Racer, I have the belt frequency tensioned at 57 hertz. And I, I have that on all three belts, 57 hertz. On the V400, and I'll show you a little bit more in detail in a moment. This here, I took the 57 hertz minus 15 hertz for the belt length, and I ended up with 48 hertz. I set these belts, all three of them, at 48 hertz. And again, this printer runs perfectly. The first layer is, everything is perfect on this. So I know this works for me, and it'll most likely work for your V400. But again, I'm not a belt scientist, so take this for what it's worth. So to begin, we're gonna use this little gauge that I showed you. Again, I did not develop this. I got it off the internet, but I did modify it to fit the, uh, what do you call it? The 10 millimeter wide belt. And I modified it so that 57 hertz will bring this little pointer right in the middle. All right. So first of all, you wanna make sure that the effector is not all the way up, but that's gonna change things. You can see it's springy. So have it come down an inch or two, just like that. Let me show you how this thing works. So Kylie, you're gonna to have to come in and do a close-up of this. So you wanna get approximately in the middle of the belt. So you can see that two of the legs have little hooks and this one does not. You wanna put this one around the belt, put this one in the front of the belt and then push this one to the back of the belt. And let me see if I can show you exactly. So put that one behind the belt, this one in front of the belt and then this one, you manipulate to the back of the belt, just like that. And you can see that it's right in the middle, 57 hertz. So we're gonna do that same exact thing to all three legs. So I've already put it on this leg because it's an awkward position to videotape. Um, Kylie's gonna zoom in on it and you'll see that that belt is also in the middle. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'll take it off and then put it on the third belt. And it's hard for Kylie to get this, but. All right, go ahead and show that, Kylie. You can see it's in the middle there as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the STL file for this on uh, the, in the bottom of this video so that you can download it and print it. I'll also put the printing parameters because that's important. You know, you gotta print it just like I printed this one. Otherwise it's not gonna work as effectively. All right, so I hope that helps. I hope you understand uh, how this all works. And if not, just leave me a comment. 
in the, in the bottom of this video and uh, I'll see what I can do about answering them. And again, I'm not a scientist, so don't be asking me any technical questions like the belt density and all of this stuff. This is it. This is what, this is all you get. <laughs> all right. Again, thank you, Kylie, for doing the video for this. I appreciate it. And we'll do another one real soon.